gentlemen, welcome back to Matt's Cigars and Whiskies. In this video, um, I am going to be taking you through my whole whiskey collection. Every bottle that I have in my whiskey collection. I re recently spoke on a video about uh, the amount of bottles I have, and I had a comment from somebody on there saying they'd like to see my collection, and it's a video I've been meaning to do for quite a while. So. Let's get it started. I believe I've got over 80 bottles in the collection, so uh, we will get through them and I'll show you what I've got. First of all, what I'm gonna start off with, uh, I'm gonna start off with my cheap budget supermarket collection. Uh, I do like going through Aldi's and Lidl's, as you may have noticed from some of my videos, and I like to go in there and I like to see what they have new on the shelves, and I normally purchase them. So I have, first of all, I've got a little Ben Bracken Isla, 40%, not a bad bottle at all. I then also have a little Ben Bracken Speyside, that's quite a nice drop. I think they're roughly around about 15 to 16 pounds a bottle. And then from Aldi's, I have the Aldi Isla, I think that's about 18 pounds a bottle, 40% yet again. I would have said obviously coloration added, chill filtered, etc. Uh, and then from Audi as well, I have the Glen Marnock Speyside. Same sort of pricing, 40%. Obviously, these are coming from established distilleries that Audi purchased, little purchase uh, by the cask. And then they rename them and rebottle them themselves. And then a fairly recent one to the collection. I think this was Christmas last year. I've got the Glen Marnock 12. It's an Audi 12 year old special they released last year. They did an 18 as well. The 18 is still in the shops. Uh, the 12, like I say, it was sold out quite quick. But I think the 18 is 30 or 40 pounds. They're hitting the wrong target or um, audience with that. Sort of costing bottle in an Audi or a little, if you ask me. And then also from Audi, got the Glen Turner Heritage Double Cask. This is one I covered in the video quite a while back. It's a port cask finish. That is actually a lovely bottle. That is running at 40% as well. It just appeared in Audi, Glen Turner. I haven't seen it since. It's not a bad bottle at all, to be honest with you. Right, that's my budget supermarket ones done. Next, uh, I will delve into my bourbon collection, which isn't very big at all. So I'll be back in a second. Right, now for the bourbon collection. Like I said, my bourbon collection is not very big at all. It's not something that I spend quite a lot of money on. I do prefer my Scotch, I do prefer my Islas and my English whiskies as well. But, bourbon wise, first of all, Buffalo Trace, 40%, standard British export, that's what we get from America. It's a standard Buffalo Trace you'll find on the shelves and on the uh, supermarkets, Amazon, etc. things like that, 40%. I've then got myself a 40%, I believe this is 45%. There we go. This is the American Buffalo Trace. This is what they get in America. You can find this sometimes imported into the UK. I was lucky enough to get a little bottle of this. Obviously, it's not the standard 70, uh, 700 mil, but it is the same sort of cost. I think this was around about 20 to 25 pound. 45%, 375 mil, 90 proof. This is a lot better than the English release that we get. Uh, I've also got a Basil Hayden's, standard, find this in a few shops in the UK, not a bad dram at all, or a bad drop, sorry, um, nice neat, lovely vanilla flavours coming out of that. I've then also got a Woodford Reserve, standard distiller select, I would like to try some of the uh, different bottlings they get where released from the Woodford. Um, Quite a nice, uh, quite a nice drop to be honest with you. Forty-three point two, seventy centiliters. You can find this in quite a lot of the uh, supermarkets in the UK. And to finish off my bourbon collection, like I said, it is not very big. Maker's Mark with the Christmas jumper. I keep the Christmas jumper. I put it on every bottle I get from the Maker's Mark because you know I do, <laughs> I do like the Christmas jumper. It's a nice little touch to the collection. It does look quite nice. And now Christmas is coming. It's going to be. Uh, this will get bought out a few times, I reckon, maybe over Christmas and pour some drops from that. And of course, not a bourbon. Jack Daniels Tennessee Whiskey. Single barrel select, 
not really my cup of tea. I keep this in the uh, collection. If I'll go to parties or if I go around someone's house, this will probably be one that I take with me this Christmas just to uh, get my way through it because I don't really drink this. It's not really, like I say, my cup of tea. Don't really like the flavourings in it too much, but obviously a lot of people do. This is one that you will find normally, I think it's around about 40 to 50 pounds. I might be wrong um, in the supermarkets, but now it's getting near Christmas. This will normally always come down in cost, sometimes by half price. Normally find it in... Uh, in the blue supermarket that rhymes with Desco. They normally have a club card special on this at this time of year. So, you know, if that's the sort of thing, it's a nice present for people. Normally comes in a uh, metal case. I've got one with a magnetic lid. You know, it's, it's one that a lot of people will drink, but like I say, it's not really to my like and not really my flavors, to be honest with you. Right, that's the bourbons done. Now gonna go start going through my collections of distilleries and bottlings that I have, so I'll be back in a second. So we've done the bourbons, now let's enter into one of my favourite little collections to be honest with you, Johnny Walker. I've always had a soft spot for Johnny Walker, obviously they do their coloured label range, um, yeah and I do like to try and have them all. We'll get through them now though, first of all Standard Johnny Walker Red Label, 40%. Cheap as chips. It's what you'll find in any old bars. People obviously, you know, they order a whiskey. Johnny Walker Red Label mixes in with Coke nicely. Straight, not really my cup of tea, to be honest with you. Not straight anyway. Um, like I say, people mix it with Coke and they really enjoy it. You've got the standard Black Label. Entering into the smoky side of Johnny Walker with that. Very popular whiskey. Yeah, again, you'll find us in a lot of bars in the UK. Roughly retails around about £20. Going up one, we have the Double Black. More smokier than the Black. Obviously, with the name Double, it gives the impression it is more smoky. I think this retails for around about £30. Don't really find this as much in any of the bars and restaurants in the UK. But it is still a very popular bottle. Pick it up on most online um, for sale sites. Uh, one named after a famous river. Um, not a bad, like I say, not a bad drop at all. We'll then go on to the ah, Black Label Sherry Cask Finish. This was advertised a while back. I had an email come through about this. I haven't yet reviewed it. It's I've only had a couple of drams from it, as you can see. Um, but it is a very, very nice drop. Um, I'll do a review on this very soon. Pick that up online as well. I think that was around about £25. Next up, possibly the best Johnny Walker in the range for money, cost, uh, taste, etc. This is the green label. If I remember right, this goes for around about £40 to £45. Beautiful drop. It's got quite a lovely, uh, lovely amount of blended whiskies in it. You've got Talisker Link with Crag and More Kalila. To name but a few, that is probably the most phenomenal. Johnny Walker, you will be able to try, that you can get your hands on easily. Lovely drop of whiskey that is. From there, obviously you go up to the Gold Label Reserve. Now, Gold Label Reserve, if I remember rightly, this isn't as smoky as the others. It's a nice dram, it's quite silky. I think this is around about 50, I may be wrong, 50 to 55 pounds. Um, it's it's not a bad dram at all. To be honest with you, the only reason I have it is because I like having the whole Johnny Walker collection. Um, bar the blue, which I'll go into in a second. Lastly, from a Johnny Walker's recently reviewed on this channel, the 18, otherwise known as the Platinum. It's expensive for what it is. Um, you know... I believe, if I remember rightly, this may be going for 65 to 70 at the minute. If you can pick it up cheaper, pick it up a lot cheaper, you know. I would never pay full cost for this. There are much better whiskies out there for that cost. Um, it is, if I remember rightly, 40%. Yeah, it is. It's fairly smoky, fairly sweet. Like I said, I've done a review on it recently. If you flick back through the videos, you will find that. It's not worth the money. It's not worth the money, but that's the reason I don't have the blue in here either. I always, I only get the blue if I ever find it going cheap because 
180 pounds for uh, the blue label. No, 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 no. I know around Christmas time, sometimes it drops to 110, which is still expensive for it, to be honest with you. To my eyes, it's an overrated whiskey. Um, it's one that I will get back in the collection at some point. It's just waiting for it to drop to that certain price point. Right, that's the Johnny Walker's done. We will now go on to another collection from one of my favourite distilleries in England. Right, next up is one of my favourite distilleries, and it's an English distillery. Now, I love this distillery because it's just down the road from me. I've visited it now on numerous occasions with my partner. Uh, it's the first distillery I ever visited with her. And it's got a little place in my heart because actually we do tours together. I think we've been on about three or four tours of the distillery together now. Never gets boring. And I'm also a member. So what I'll do first of all, I start off with the membership bottles. I'm a fellowship member. This is April 2022's. It's a bourbon, bourbon cask, batch number two, 22, 46%. English whiskey company, no chill filtration, no coloration added to any of their whiskies. This one here, single grain bourbon and virgin cask, June 2022. That is a very, very nice whiskey. Very nice. That's 45%. This one here, we have the 46% Sherry Butts. That is a stunner. The color of that, that is absolutely beautiful. It really, really is. That is a very, very nice whiskey. That is uh, 46%. And the last one for the club bottlings that I have still, I have August 2022 Bourbon Cask. Number four, 2022. That is a smoky bourbon cask whiskey. That is very nice too. Now, also coming in from them, I have an 11-year-old, 56.8% single cask release. These, second fill, bourbon cask, ab, so American standard bourbon, absolutely beautiful whiskey. Um, these are all distillery shop buys, I believe, most of these. Um, going to the distillery shop whenever I go there for a tour. I have a hunt around and see what single cask releases they have in there. So that is the 11 year old, like I say, 56.8%. This one here, another one from the distillery, 58.1% sherry cask. Look at that European oak, the coloration of that. Now that, that is a corker. That really, really is. That is an ab absolutely phenomenal whiskey that is one 58.1 percent that is a stonker that really is that's one of i would say that might well be one of my favorite whiskies in the collection uh what else have we got on here one that i haven't opened yet i wouldn't normally show you on open bottles but this was one that was hand poured by myself at a distillery still haven't opened it i'm going to save it for uh maybe christmas this year seven year old non-chill filtered 57.1% bourbon cask. Not a bad looking whiskey. Hopefully that'll be nice. This one here, bourbon matured, 46%. Small batch release, yet again, from the uh, English whiskey distillery shop. That is quite a nice whiskey. That's quite silky, uh, if I remember rightly. Quite sweet. There's a lot of vanillas going on in there. Nice drop. Nice drop indeed. What else have I got down here? Ah, another distillery exclusive, 45.9%, 2021. 13, bottle number 13 out of 432. I remember going to the distillery with my missus for this one. Uh, we had a look around. Haven't opened it yet again. It's another one that I... I like to save these ones for special occasions. You know, they're not they're not they're not the most expensive whiskies, but things like this they mean quite a bit to me because obviously I got them with my partner when I was at the distillery. I remember sit. I went for ages. I was going through the bottlings on this, trying to find the lowest number I could within the uh, distillery shop, and number thirteen was the lowest number I could find. Lucky for some. When I try this, I'll see if it'll be lucky for me. Da, da, da. What else have I got in there? I think this is the last one from there. 50 litre quarter cask, single cask release, 54, one of 54 bottles. This is 51.2%. Now that was from the whiskey side Sherm bar. It's an exclusive bottling for them. I managed to pick one up. 
that is one I'll be saving and I'll be having this Christmas. I will be eating my way through this. There's no, do not worry about that. Right, that is my English whiskey collection or English whiskey distillery collection done. Let's move on to another very common distillery, uh, Speyside Distillery, but it is one in which has a little place in my heart. Don't ask me why, but whenever I see a new bottling from them, I have to purchase it. Back in a second. Right, as I said a little while ago, we're going to go through uh, not a really well-loved distillery by a lot of people, but uh, this is my Tam the Vullen collection. Something I've always had a little soft spot for. Uh, don't ask me why. I have always see them in the supermarkets and places like that, so I've just ended up purchasing probably most of the collection. I've got the number one from the red, cask, red wine cask selection, which is the uh, French Cabernet Sauvignon. I've also got the number two from the red wine cask selection, which is the Spanish Grenache cask. <clears throat> Very nice whiskey that is. Number three from the red wine cask selection, which is the German Pinot Noir. I have the number four from the red wine cask selection, which is American Cabernet Sauvignon. That is a very nice one as well. And I've got a new one here, which I am due to review very soon on the channel. It is the white wine cask edition Sauvignon Blanc casks, Tam de Vullen. That is a nice one. And on the front here, I have the Sherry Cask Standard, obviously, which you'll find. These are all 40%, by the way. Standard uh, release, which you'll find in all the supermarkets and places like that. And also the Double Cask, which I would say is probably the most common Tam de Vullen out there. But yeah, that is my Tam de Vullen shelf. Right, now let's go look at my other bottles on my cabinet on the other side of the room. Right, so if we look in here, this is the second from top shelf on my cabinet. The top one I uh, have my bourbons on, but on this one I have a Big Pete limited edition green welly stop. That is coming in at 48%. I won that on an Instagram um, competition, believe it or not. My Glen Fiddick experiment casks. I've got a uh, bottle, sorry, I've got my IPA experiment. Tiny little bit of whiskey left in there. Fire and Cane which is not too bad at all. And also my Project 20 coming in at 47%. <clears throat> that is actually a nice dram. Two Lefroigs at the back there. I've got my Select and my 10 year old. Now the 10 year old, I wanted to get hold of the Sherry Cask, um, Cask Strength release, but I still haven't got it. I will probably purchase that at some point in the near future. And in front of them, I've got my Dow Winnie, 15 year old. That's a lovely dram. And my Brook Laddie, classic Laddie, standard fare in I think most uh, most collections. It's probably the, the most common Brook Laddie that you find on the market. And over here I've got my Boutique Whiskey Company Single Malt Island Number 2, aged 25 years. The question mark on the front says it all. What is in there it is a top secret. Now, if we move from here, we then come down onto my bottom shelf whiskies. I've got my uh, Bonahaban Stewart Air. That is, I haven't really had much out of that to be honest with you. I think that's along the lines of 46.3%. That's not a bad dram. I've got a cheetah there, Japanese whiskey. To be honest with you, I don't really dive into that too much. Loch Lomond Classic, 40% Morrison's purchase. Uh, Glen Keith. <clears throat> This was purchased for me on my birthday by my Mrs. Dad, 40% I believe. Behind the, I'll put that on the floor. I've got my Balveni signature, 12 years, batch number three. A little bit left in there. That is a lovely dram. That's one that I, uh, I try to save and keep back, to be honest with you. Don't really drink much of that. Doublewood, Balveni. That's not really, uh, not really one I delve into either. Uh, maybe drink it every now and then. That's a forty percent. Uh, what we got back here? We've got the Ardmore Highland Single Malt Legacy, forty percent. Uh, another supermarket purchase. Ockentosh and American Oak, another supermarket purchase, forty percent. These are all just basically sort of lower end 
of the whiskies in which I uh, like to drink. That's why I leave them on here. Monkey shoulder, always have a bottle of monkey shoulder in there. You never know when it could come in handy. A lot of people love the monkey. Got two elements of Isla there. Foolproof peat, 59.3% and Kalila, 13. Isla, single malt scotch whiskey, 54.6%. Car strength again. And in this bad boy, that is my Speyside Infinity Bottle. It's got a little bit of everything in there. I might do a video on that very soon. That is a lovely, lovely whiskey, to be honest with you. What I've created myself in there is very nice. I'm very proud of it, to be honest with you. It's one that I like to dip into every now and then. Obviously, it's an infinity bottle, so I will be adding drams to it all the time to keep it topped up. Different whiskies. It's uh, never, ever ends, hence the name infinity bottle. Right, let's finish over here. Like I say, that's one of my little whiskey cabinets and we'll go over to where I sit on my videos and we'll go through what I have on the shelves over there. So as you saw, that was uh, one of my whiskey cupboards plus my Tam the Vullen shelf. Now I'm gonna finish off with these bad boys over here. This shelf here, mainly Campbelltown whiskies. We have Campbelltown lock, blended whiskey lovely dram that is really really nice um still available on the market i believe it's still retailing at around about 48 pounds you can find that it's not like the other spring banks that sell out disappear and you never really get your chance to get a hand on 2021 10 year old hazel burn 10 open this the other day having a little bit of a uh, drink through it it's uh, not a bad dram at all i'll do a video on this very soon and if we come over here, Springbank 12, car strength 55.3. I think this was a 20, 20 release. Eight for the first 20. To be honest with you, lovely drop. Yet again, it, the 12 car strengths are so hard to get hold of. I've, you know, there's, there's more whiskies I'd like to add to my Campbelltown collection. Even just an SB10, you know, Springbank, Springbank 10. I'd love a local barley in here. I've tried, I've entered ballots. Never get my hands on them. It's a bit soul destroying to be honest with you. And also on here, I have a 2021 Kilkerran 12. I'll do a uh, review on that very soon as well. Try, always try and get the Kilkerran 8s. Last year I really wanted a, uh, the port cast finish. I wanted to try that. Entered all the ballots yet again. I did not even get a sniff, but that's the way it goes. The FOMO with uh, Springbank Campbelltown at the minute is unbelievable and getting your hands on any of the releases, you're a very lucky person if you can get your hands on anything other than the Campbelltown lock or the SB10s which are still becoming more and more rare and the price is still rising on them. And of course over here as well there's a little bit left in here, Brook Laddie, Black Art, 1992, 5.1, 24 years, now this, that. That is an absolutely stunning, stunning whiskey, you know. That is an absolute beauty. That is one that I will only have a dram of every now and then, like literally every now and then. It's to be savoured. Um, I will probably share some at some point. When I finish it off, you know, I'll probably give a couple of drams to my friends. There's not a lot left in there at all. Uh, it's one that I really do like to sit down and savour. It's a beautiful winter's dram. Right, and on this bottom shelf, what I have here is my Summerton Whiskey Club bottlings. Here I have the Wolfburn Latitude. Now, Summerton Whiskey Club, uh, there's a new release coming out next week. It's due to be dropped when I'm making this video on the Monday or Tuesday, it should turn up. So I'll be doing a video on that because I didn't, I missed the last one. I missed doing a review on the Mac Mirror. Uh, wish I would have done. But I didn't have the time to do it. So I'll be doing one on the next one. But this is one of the releases. Latitude, 46%. Wolfburn. That is not a, not, a, not a bad dram at all either. To be honest with you, all the bottlings I've had from uh, Summerton Whiskey Club, all been lovely. Cotswolds, I haven't really delved into this too much. I did do a review on it. Uh, Cotswolds Reserve, Summerton Whiskey Club release. 50% uh, alcohol. That's quite a nice bottle, to be honest with you. It's quite a nice dram. Non-chill filtered, natural coloration. 
like I say, one I got from the uh, Somerton Whiskey Club, which I was quite chuffed with. This is last month's bottling from them. The Somerton Whiskey Club, the McMira Small Batch 01. I should have done a video on it. It's a bit late now, to be honest with you, because the new one's coming out. I believe this is, it's a nice dram. It is, it's, there's quite a lot going on in it. It's quite complex. It's one that I will have to delve into more because there are quite a lot of flavours in this which I've picked out and there's also a few which, you know, every time you taste it, something new comes to the palate. So that's what I'll be delving into this winter. And the Whiskey Baron, Somerton Whiskey Club, Gavan, Grain Whiskey, 51.4%. That is an absolutely stunning whiskey that really is that is an absolute beauty that's one which i will only have a little bit every now and then you know just a little tiny little tiny sip of it just to uh just to savor the flavors summerton whiskey club really pulled it out of the bag well to be honest with you they always pull it out of the bag with the whiskies that they send out and last but not least this was a present from my partner's kids the smallest whiskey bottle in the world it's a Dalmore, it's 43%, single Highland malt scotch whiskey, the smallest whiskey bottle in the world. I like, I'm not going to drink this, I'm just literally going to keep this on the side, because that, that's like a little, <clears throat> little present from them to me, which you know, it's very, very uh, thoughtful, very well appreciated. But yeah, that is my collection. Obviously there will be more added to it, I've got one bottle sitting over there which I haven't spoken about which I'll be doing a video on um, that's still in a box I was going to do an unboxing video on that that is that turned up the other day that's the English Whiskey Company's latest membership release which I'll do an unboxing video of very soon for you but yeah um, do I have too many bottles maybe do I enjoy looking at them and do I enjoy buying whiskey and drinking whiskey yes will I keep doing it yes but anyway, like I say, if you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, I'll do another one next year, I reckon. I'll probably do one a year to see where my collection's at, what new bottlings I've got, etc., etc. But thank you very much for watching. I uh, really appreciate the support. You know, if you've liked uh, the video, thank you very much. I'm not going to go into all that like, subscribe stuff because everyone knows how YouTube works. But I will leave that there. <clears throat> and I will say thank you again. And I will see you in the next video.